Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 132, which will introduce the idea of electric potential. By the end of this video, you should know that the electric force is conservative, i.e. there is a potential energy associated with the electric force. You should be able to define what a potential is and be able to calculate potential energy from a potential. We'll begin by stating that the electric force is a conservative force, which means that an electric potential energy must exist. In one of your problems, you will explore the idea of work done by a charge moving in a uniform electric field. You will see that as the charge moves around, the work done is independent of the path that the charge takes, and that the work done around a closed loop path is in fact zero. This fact that the work done around a closed loop path is indicative of the fact that the electric field must be a conservative force. This should be familiar to you from the conservative versus non-conservative forces video I've asked you to review. Since the electric force is conservative, we know that we can write down a potential energy, U sub E, for the electrical force. As usual, your book will use PE for potential energy, but we in class will use the letter capital U. We've actually been using the idea of electric potential energy already throughout both this class and Physics 131. The chemical energies discussed in Physics 131 are actually electric potential energies. Similarly, the potential energies of the electrons that we've been discussing in Units 1 and 2 unless we stated explicitly that they were gravitational potential energies, were electric potential energies. So what is the electric potential? So here we have an electron surrounding a nucleus again. The question arises from the same place as our discussion of electrical forces. How does the electron know that the nucleus is there? In the case of forces, we said that the nucleus generates an electric field E the electron is in contact with this field, and as a result, feels a force, QE. Essentially, we're going to say the same thing for potential energy. The nucleus is going to generate an electric potential, V, around it. You'll learn how to calculate these potentials from point charges in your text. The electron does contact the potential, and as a result, feels a potential energy, QV. There's a deep connection between electric field and electric potential that will be explored in a later reading. Just as with electric field, the potential exists regardless of if there is something to feel it there or not. So even if I were to remove the electron, the potential would still be present. Now let's take a moment to talk about the units of potential. The unit of potential is the volt. V. Yes, it has the same symbol as the quantity that we're using for volt, but we have to deal with it. One volt is one joule per coulomb. This is visible from the equation connecting potential and potential energy. If I rewrite U equals QV into V equals U over Q, we know that U has units of joules, Q has units of coulombs, so V, potential, is going to have units of joules per coulomb, which we call volts. This second way of writing potential as U over Q is why some people call potential potential energy per unit charge. On the other hand, I want you to think of it as an invisible field around charges that gives rise to potential energy when other charged particles interact with it. Now let's do an example. An electron has 20 EV of kinetic energy in a region where the potential is 10 volts. The electron then travels to a region with a lower potential of 5 volts. What are the initial and final potential energies? What is the change in potential energy? So let's begin by looking at the initial potential energy, U equals QV. We know the charge of the electron, minus 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and our initial potential is 10 volts. So the initial potential energy will be minus 16.02 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, or converting that to EV, 
minus 10 eV. Now let's do the final potential energy. We know the charge of the electron again. Our final potential is 5 volts. Multiplying this together, we get a final potential of minus 8.01. Multiplying this together, we get a final potential energy of minus 8.01 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, or minus 5 eV. Now let's think about the change in potential energy, u final minus u initial. We solved for our final as minus 5 eV. We solved for our initial of minus 10 eV. So the result is a change of positive 5 eV. Even though the potential dropped from 10 to 5, the potential energy actually increased. This is due to the fact that the electron has a negative charge. Throughout our calculations, we've been multiplying the potential V by a negative Q. If we had instead considered a proton, then Q would be positive, and a positive drop in potential would result in a drop in potential energy. Once we have changes in potential energy, we can then move on to solve problems using conservation of energy, as we've been doing throughout this course. One last point to discuss is the connection between the volt and the electron volt. You may have already started to see this connection in the last problem. Throughout this course, and in Physics 131, we've been using the electron volt as a unit of energy, and we've just been using it as a straight conversion factor. 1 eV is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now, however, you have enough information to understand where this unit of energy comes from. 1 eV is the increase in energy of an electron as it goes across a 1 volt potential drop. To solve it out, we know u is qv, so the change in u is the charge times the change in potential. The charge of the electron is minus 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. A potential drop would be a change in potential of minus 1 volt. And so multiplying it all out, we see that an electron going across a 1 volt potential drop has an increase in potential energy of 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, which we recognize as 1 eV. So in summary, potential is to potential energy as electric field is to electric force. Forces result in charged objects interacting. Forces result from charged particles interacting with the fields generated by other charged objects through F equals QE. Potential energies result from charged objects interacting with the potentials generated by other charged objects, mathematically written as U equals QV. So fields and potentials have the same sort of relationship as forces and potential energies. We can solve many problems by looking at it either in terms of fields and potentials just like we can solve many problems by looking at it in terms of forces or potential energies. The unit of the potential is the volt, where 1 volt is equal to 1 joule per coulomb, and now you know that the electron volt is a unit of energy arises from the amount of energy gained by an electron going across a 1 volt potential difference. This concludes this video.